Yeah, hi. Professor Eric Laithwaite, Magnetic River, 1975. Yeah, I have to admit, I wasn't good at school. I wasn't interested in basically anything too much, except maybe sport. And I was pondering about the reason why. And I think I figured out the main reason why nobody could make me interest into those things what they were teaching in school was the reason that no one told me that they are all related. They were trying to teach some mathematics and like basic physics and stuff. But no one ever told in history, no one ever told that they're all related. And we never had one second of electromagnetism in school, basic school. Now, I want to share with you a little piece of this video. This is science, how I, like even people like I understand it. Like, there's nothing, like in 75, they didn't have any computers to make any computer models. Now what we have, you can make a computer model for whatever, even of black holes. So, even though there is no computer models available in the year 1975, he is really able to explain you how things work in a mechanical way. Watch this. Much more like what you would expect if you threw a piece of wood into a flowing river. It would float and move along. So this, then, is the beginnings of a magnetic river. But it hasn't got any banks. Because if I take my thumb away from here, it'll come off the side. If I take it too far towards you, it'll come off the other side. But if only we could stabilize it, then we should have something that looked exactly like a river. Now, how does all this work? Could I have the round rod, please, eh? This is a mechanical model of what you've just seen. Instead of a row of coils, we've got a row of rods. We're going to feed them with alternating current so that each one can rise and fall. And when we turn the whole thing, we get the impression of something traveling along. But I want you to notice that nothing actually travels along, because each rod only moves up and down. The thing that makes it real is when we put something into one of the troughs of the wave. Then something real travels along. You can make it go the other way. If you watch an individual rod such as this one, you'll see that it's only going up and down. There is no horizontal movement at all. Only the ball is a real thing moving side to side. It's exactly the same with this magnetic river. I can switch it on and there is nothing above there Nothing moving horizontally until I put in the aluminium. And it's like putting the ball into the rods. So this is our first step towards a magnetic river. So, uh, I really don't understand why this isn't teached in school. And, or it's the other way around. It's exactly why they don't teach this in school, because it's this kind of obscuration of facts. You know, like there's like magnetic trains all over the world, driving on magnetic rails, and they're like floating there, and they're really fast, and all this kind of stuff. and. Magnets are used wherever, at home, on your fridge door. You yeah, have to buy milk, cheese, potatoes, or whatever you're going to buy. But no one ever really teached you about magnetics, nor electromagnetics. Like how important electricity is. For example, someone dies or has a heart attack, let's say like that. Someone has a heart attack. 
what do you do? You induce a huge amount of electricity into the person. Electroshock. What happens? Like, let's say, if it works, it's not always working. But what happens? You induce electricity into the body. Muscle, muscles work like it's this kind of tissue. And if you induce electricity into it, it reacts. So the muscle moves. It pulls itself together. And if you release the electricity, it relaxes. So if you induce energy into somebody's heart, you try to make the muscle move again, that it gets its rhythm of the electro impulse into the muscles of the heart, that it pumps the blood through your body. And not only that, our blood is red because there is iron in it. And everybody knows like how iron and magnetism correlate together, they work together. Also, like electricity, it's really conductive. We are made 80% or even much more out of water, which is a really good conductor. Electricity flows through water. That's why it's important that you stay hydrated, that the electrical circuit in you doesn't break down. Why those things don't get teached in school? You can teach this in fourth class, start teaching this. The kids could construct their own electromagnetic models, make experiments. Mm. Take a car battery and then you get a spark and then you can start to play around. What happens if I put a spark onto a metal plate? What happens when I put a spark onto an apple? What happens if I put a spark onto a rock or sand? You know, what kind of patterns do you get if you play around with electricity and different kinds of material, liquids? gravel, sand, tissue, like apples, pineapple, like what happened, like just it would be really interesting to know, I don't have the possibility to try it by myself, I would have done like millions of experiments if I would have the possibility, but I don't, so if there's anybody out there who has the possibility to try that, like what happens to a coconut if you induce a re really huge amount of energy to it? And there's like, I'm not a specialist in electricity, there's like AC and DC currents and all this kind of different like shunt circuits and unshunted circuits and static and whatever. There's many kind of different possibilities. But like coconut. How does it react if you put electricity into it? That like, let's flow, like for example, let's just let the electricity flow through it. Like Earth, plus on top, minus on the bottom, and then just induce energy. Different kinds of amounts of energy for different amounts of time and this kind of stuff. And what happens if the coconut the shell outside is wet too? instead of dry, and all these kind of things. You could make it a school, and then you one maybe could think, yeah, what if the coconut would be earth, and there would be basically an endless amount of energy available. Hence, the universe, which can provide, like, let's say, an almost infinite amount of energy. And, yeah, I'll maybe leave it here. But I really wanted to share you this video. 
and I really hope you watched the whole like this video and all the other videos this guy has. This is science. You don't need a computer model. You don't need too much, you know, mathematics and formulas. Really, really strange words no one can understand. You take your thing, explain what the people see. There's electricity going through, water going through there. There's two circuits. And watch what happens. Yeah. Two things should have been teached in school. Electromagnetics and how to use your eyes. I'll leave it here. Thanks.